Hi everyone, welcome back to Spirit Lounge and our continuation of the Apocrypha series. Uh, this is the last uh, chapter in the Universal uh, Dutra Canon and it's the Maccabees Revolts. It's a little more interesting, so it's not too long, it's about 9 or 10 slides, so we'll go straight into that. There is Maccabees 1 and 2 chapters in this section actually, but there's a lot of repetitive repetition in the second chapter of the Maccabees, um, Maccabees and I've only taken out some relevant stuff, so it's it's very short. The chap, the uh, second part of the Maccabees um, a revolt description in this section. So, without further ado, let's uh, move on into the text and um, get through that. So, this is Maccabees um, a one and two. Again, I said one two has a lot of repetition, so we're not going to. I didn't pull out too much from there, but. Uh, there's some background in here, uh, which shows the story. Um, and I pulled out as much of the, uh, what I thought may be something we could do from a spiritual context or, or a personal journey path context as I could. Okay, the, uh, the Deuterocan and Sel Maccabees is the name of, uh, it's new meaning hammer, but it's, it's applied to uh, the books of the Maccabees, which uh, is, is, uh, which is Judah's third son of the priests of uh, Mattathias, the first leader of the revolt against the Seleucid kings who persecuted the Jews. So Mac the, the sons, uh, the Maccabean sons, um, uh, uh, led the revolts around six words in circa 100 BC. And the purpose is to record the deliverance of Israel, um, of Israel that God worked through the family of the Mattathias and his three sons, Judas, Jonathan, and Simon, and it goes on to describe all of that, and I'm not going to be repeating it. Again, the Apocrypha's collection of books, uh, really stories about battles, revolts, um, uh, hist from a historical standpoint, um, that sheds light on events around this, uh, the the passage of of the uh, of of the D D D Judean faith and those of it. Um, and you can read the description there from this uh, from this uh, link if you wish, but there's plenty of descriptions online. And uh, written between the Old and New Testament. Okay, so let's move straight into it. Alexander, the Macedonian, the son of Philip, struck Darius the king. He reigned in his stead. So there was obviously an overthrow and a, a bloody one there. He reigned in his stead. He fought many battles and king, killed the kings. Earth was quiet before him. He fell sick. He reigned 12 years and he died. There came out Antochius, Antochius Epiphanes, Epiphanes out of Israel. Out of Israel, transgressors of the law. And so these are the, the Jews uh, saying, let us go and make a covenant. We were parted. Evils have befallen us. We built a place of exercise in Jerusalem. They made themselves uncircumcised and forsook the holy covenant and joined themselves to the nations, sold themselves to do evil, the nations being those of who were not of Judaic nation, of the tribes as it were. Antiochus entered into, Ebra, into Egypt, got possessions of the strong cities. He went up against Israel and Jerusalem. He took the golden altar he had taken all. He went away, and there was a great mourning in Israel. Uh, they were made feeble. The house of Jacob was clothed with shame. A citadel put there a sinful nation, transgressors of the law. So these transgressors, remember, we're talking about the transgressors of the law of their God, or the God that they were that they that they were worshiping, and the commandments and teachings as such had fallen away from it as it were, which is what some of the previous passages were describing also. It became a place, and therefore they were punished not just to slavery, but obviously overthrow and so forth. It became a place, an evil adversary to Israel continually. They shed innocent blood on every side. King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people. Many of Israel consented to his worship profaned the Sabbath, which is a day of rest, on Saturday, tore in pieces the scrolls. 20, on the 25th day of the month, they sacrificed on the uh, idol, idol altar of God. 
women who had circumcised their children, so basically they started to circumcise, um, circumcise, sorry, sacrifice, circumcise children. This is what I was saying, virgin, virgins. These were children, little girls for the most part. And so, you know, this is where some of the very darker practices, which um, I would say still are practiced underground these days <clears throat> in more satanic Luciferian circles. In those days, Mattathias rose up from Jerusalem. And this was the, the father of the sons. He had five sons. John, which is Gadis, Simon, which is Thassis, Thassi, Gadis, and Thassi, Judas, which is Maccabeus. And he kind of led that revolt, so you'll see in the story. Eleazar, which is Avaran, another word, another in, uh, in, uh, interpretation of it, and Jonathan, which is Aphos. He saw the blasphemes that were committed. Why was I born to see the destruction of my people, the holy city, into the hands of aliens? Heaven forbid that we should forsake the law and the ordinances, which are the religious rites and rules and practices and so forth, that they were passed down, that they were not following, or rather a large portion of them were not following, I wouldn't say all of them, because the text does suggest there were uh, what we call righteous ones, uh, virtuous ones, ones who were following this, uh, the teachings. He and his sons fled into the mountains. Man pursued after them, set the battle in array against them on the Sabbath day. Come out and do according to the word of the king. Hurried to give them battle. Let us die in our innocence. So they mustered up an army and struck the sinners in anger. So they went down, mustered up an army and struck those who came after them. Uh, went, went around and pulled down their altars. Circumcised by force the children who were uncircumcised. Now I don't see that as a divine act. This is my comment here. You may do so, but I do not. These are acts of their own. And remember you have to take responsibility for your actions, words, thoughts and intentions and don't put any divinity as an excuse for your actions. These were of those times. There's many more brutalities of ages that have gone and passed after this, but we have uh, evolved since, I would suggest. They rescued the law out of the hand of the nations, nations being other nations, not the Judaic ones. So consider you from, the, so consider you from generation to generation that none that put their trust in him will lack for strength. And that's, I think this is a true statement, and it's a valid one if we interpret it more generically. Let's leave aside the Judaic God or the Yahweh itself here in this case. But we gain strength the, more, the closer we understand our infinite uh, and eternal existence, and the closer we connect with our divine in divinity within, the God source within. It gives us untold strength, not in physical might, but it's a strength within the spirit, within our aligning soul, within our being. There's an unwavering strength that comes and of knowing, of evolution, of expansion, expansion and gnosis. This, this gives you an incredible strength and a, and a perspective on physicality and this reality and true reality, which gives another strength. So there's multiple layers of strength. It doesn't have to be physical, muscular strength. This, this, this kind of strength goes way beyond that. Judas Maccabeus, he has been strong and mighty from his youth. He will be your captain and will fight the battle of the people. So this was saying he was ultimately became a leader. <clears throat> his son Judas, who was called Maccabeus, rose up his head. His countrymen helped him. They fought with gladness the battle of Israel. He pursued the lawless, destroyed the ungodly out of the land and turned away wrath from Israel. Fear of Judas and his countrymen and dread and the dread of them began to fall on the nations around them. So the word was spreading, in other words. King Antiochus, Antiochus heard he was full of indignation. Remember, there were many battles like this. We've already read a few of these previously, particularly in Judith, for example, where there was another battle with another king and another ruler and so forth in different centuries. Uh, gathered forces. <coughs> Excuse me. So Antiochus heard and gathered the force an army against them to root and destroy the strength of Israel and Jerusalem. <clears throat> take away their memorial, sent, and he sent 40, to take away the memorial and sent 40,000 footmen. 
Judas and his countrymen saw that, he, that the evils were multiplied. Are you gathering strength? Let us fight for our people and the holy place. Um, the holy place for them was obviously Jerusalem, but remember, everything is divine because it is within the divine. All faiths have holy places. So therefore, everything is holy. We must respect all, all forms of practice because they're all focusing on the same thing. There's nothing else, nothing more holier than anything else on this earth, in my perspective and perceptions. They stirred up the, the Nazarites, Judas appointed leaders. This way his brothers take more, more of a, a position. Um, Gorgias uh, took 5,000 footmen uh, so they might fall on the army of the Jews and strike them suddenly. So this was a commander, I would say, from Antiochus. Judas appeared with 3,000 men. Do not fear the multitude. Destroy this army. Nations were defeated. So the nations were defeated, so they won. Judas returned to plunder the camp with much gold and silver and great riches. The king in the next year gathered 60,000 chosen footmen. Judas said, Behold, our enemies are defeated. Let us go up to clean, cleanse the holy place. This was to said uh, Jerusalem, probably the temple as well. People fell on their faces and worshipped. So this was saying when they take away their uh, monument, this would be the temple. Um, given, them, uh, given them good success, deck the forefront of the temple with gold and shields and re reproach of the nations was turned away surrounding nations heard that the altar was built and the sanctuary dedicated Ca uh, counsel to destroy the race of Ju jacob judas said to simon his brother choose out men deliver your countrymen that are in galilee simon went pursued them to the gate of uh, putheme and fell the nations and he took their spoils again more armies gathered and they had more battles and so forth. Timotheus gathered another army. Judas went to meet them. Judas and his countrymen were glorified in, in, in exceedingly in the sight of all Israel and of all the nations. So they were winning all these battles. In other words, there were many battles in this passage. I wasn't about to type all of them. Because they're not they are of a spiritual context. Judas heard the fame of the Romans that they were valiant men and have pleasure in all that joined themselves to, that, to them and make friends with all such as come to them and that they were valiant men. He told him wars, he told him about the wars among the Gauls and went, he went to Rome, entered the Senate and said, good success to the Romans and to the nation of the Jews by sea and by land forever. And then there became more battles. So it looks like he went to make peace or make friends with the Romans. King Demetrius, which is the king of Macedon between 300 and 200 BC, to the nation of Jews, you have kept your covenants with us and continued in our friendship. Now I free you and release all the Jews from their tributes. Let Jerusalem be holy and free. I give every year 15,000 shekels of silver from the Reich, from the king's revenues. Demetrius fell. Alexander sent ambassadors to Protenemy, the king of Egypt. Having gotten dominion, so Ptolemy obviously killed Demetrius in this way and having got in dominion uh, overthrown Demetrius let us make friends give me now your daughter to a wife this is where Cleopatra comes in and so he went to see King Alexander um, did Ptolemy and uh, asked for the, his, his daughter his daughter was Cleopatra in this case King Alexander met him bestowed in, in him his daughter Jonathan requested of the king that he would make Judea free from tribute. Appoint you over the four governments. And so he goes on, or goes on to talk of Simon and a battle with Tryphon, the Greek king. Jonathan killed the Greek king. Great lamentation. Jonathan was killed in this battle. There's great lamentation. Simon built a monument for him in seven pyramids. Um, Simon built strongholds in Judea. So this talks about another battle and this marriage of Cleopatra, which I only put in here because of the Cleopatra story here. Again, there's not a lot of spiritual context in this. It's really, really about this Maccabean revolt, which I thought might be interesting just to um, talk about. Uh, and you can see from here, there's, there's, this is definitely not scripture. It's not uh, providing guidance or spiritual content. Uh, I don't think it does much of that even as we, pa as we passage through this book. Um, it is really a narrative of some historical events, true or otherwise. 
uh, which we'll try to pull out as much as we can that may be of um, content that is appropriate for this channel. Okay, this is Maccabean, Maccabean 2. Um, so this is the second part of it. Uh, and again, there's a lot of repetition here. I did pull it out. And so Maccabean 2 is uh, uh, due to canonical uh, uh, text. It's ter this due to canonical is termed in 1560 to describe texts uh, by the Catholic Church, which is uh, which are regarded as um, secondary texts, not necessary scripture. So it focuses again on the Maccabean revolt against Antichius, which we've already talked about, and Epiphanes, which we've already talked about, and Antichius um, Epiphanes, and concludes that the defeat of the Seleucid Gen uh, Empire General Nicanor, uh, Nicanor, so this was another one, another battle, uh, by Judas Maccabeus, is written in Greek around 124 BC. Uh, Jews that are in Jerusalem and those who are in the country of Judea sent greetings. May God be with you. To, may, may God do good to you and remember his covenant with Abraham and Isaac. Open your heart in his law and in his statutes. Not forsake you in an evil time. Reign of Demetrius is the 169th year. Shed, so that's long, a long reign and a long life. Shed innocent blood and we implored the Lord having been saved by God out of great perils, as men arrayed against a king, we thank him greatly. He cast out into Persia those who arrayed themselves against us. Blessed be our God in all things, who, who gave for a prey those who had committed impiety. So this is talking about um, thanks for the victories in their battles against in this Maccabean revolt. And this is like a prayer, O Lord, O Lord, the Creator did all things who are terrible and strong and righteous and merciful, who alone are king and gracious, supplies every, every need, almighty and continuous. You save Israel out of all evil. Who made the fathers your chosen? Guard your own portion. Set liberty those who are in bondage among the heathen. Let the heathen know you are our God. Plant your people in the holy place. So obviously connecting themselves with with this God. Um, whatever you think of that, this is what the uh, text is saying. They should not forget the statues, statutes of the Lord, neither be led astray in their minds when they saw images of gold and silver and the adornment thereof. The Lord should not depart from their heart. Lord, disclose these things. Glory of the Lord, disclose. Moses prayed to the Lord and fire came down out of the heaven and consumed the sacrifice. So I would, I would suggest, what, what is it that is coming out of the heavens here? Is it a lightning bolt? Is it, what is that? Is this a metaphor for something? Now God, will, who saved all his people and restored the heritage to all, God, we have hope and he will quickly have mercy on us. He delivered us out of evils. Okay. When the holy city was inhabited with all peace... The laws were kept very well. Because the godliness of, of Onias, the chief priest, and his hatred for wickedness, but, uh, Ptolemy uh, quickly, appear, quickly appointed Nicanor, or Nicanor, the son, command of no fewer than 20,000 of all nations to destroy the whole race of Judea. Nicanor, Nicanor undertook by the, sake of, by the sale of the captive Jews by Jewish slaves, the help of God leading the first band himself, he joined battle with Nisanor. They killed of the enemy above 9,000. So basically there was a promotion to buy Jews as slaves, but there was a battle and he was defeated. So there, there's many battles in the Maccabean revolt, not just one against many, it seems many um, uh, commanders that were sent from various kings who obviously started to overthrow each other through murder probably. And lived. He seems to be living quite a number of years because some of them was over what uh, over a hundred years of reign. Um, so always living long lives as well, according to these these uh, these texts. So again, that's the um, that's the end of the Maccabean revolt. There's, there was all that like, I could pull out. Again, there's not much spiritual content in that. We're going to find this a lot in the Apocrypha. Actually, I was expecting. It to be a spiritual text, but when I've got into it and researched it, 
It actually isn't. But we'll go through it anyway because I think it may have some more as we go through, but it's not a spiritual text, so we won't expect what we find in Nagamadi, for example, and what we may find in the Testaments, um, when I, which, I, which I am going to be uh, reading after this. Okay, the second coming is yourself. We, um, I want to keep stressing this. I do it every time because it is yourself. These books and any other scripture are guides for us, but not something we should remain on. We should take from them what we can to expand ourselves and move on, move forward against the many stones across the river, as I constantly describe it to be. Uh, and this is a transformative one. It's a life change. You have to become something. It's not just a practice every Sunday or every Saturday or whatever the, the, the day of worship for you particularly may be. It's actually a, it's a persistent one. You have to become this um, in every action, word, thought and intention within you because that's how transformation happens. It doesn't happen if it's just an activity for virtue and uh, self-righteousness. Okay, so I want to say thank you again for listening uh, to this. I appreciate it. Um, thanks to those who watch and uh, listen to these videos. I much appreciate it because your time is precious and your comments are also really valued. Um, I do appreciate them. I do get one or two now, and um, it really helps me because I do this um, actually for also personal reasons, um, for my own passage, but I do it to help others for the most part. This is why this channel was created, why the book I wrote was there. It's a foundational thing, a uh, book. It um, may, may write others, we don't know. We'll see what um, what comes to me. Uh, but I want to say thanks to you for listening. God bless to you all. Until next time, thank you.